All right, so we're at the block at the new Aboriginal tent embassy in Sydney. This is Cathy Vogan reporting. Hi. Hello. Can you sign our visitors' book again? Yes. Oh, today again? Yeah. Every yeah time sure. You come. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. How are you? How are you, Jenny? Good. <laughs> Hi. Ah, good morning. <laughs> Did you sleep well? Ah, uh, yeah. Beautiful view. No, the sun was so beautiful this morning. Yes. You can see why they've been trying to sort of demoralise and smash the block down. Is so that they can get expensive real estate. Yeah, real estate. Yeah. Oh yeah, big money involved in this. Jenny, who are the four women who are leading this? The four grandmothers. Um, Kay Hooky, very big family here in the community and Joan and Debbie Bell, very big families in the community too and been here for, not like I said, a lot longer than me and the first tenants here yeah. at the housing company, their families. And yourself, you're part of this oh, yeah, organisation now. Day one. Oh yeah. well I'm not part of their legal organisation yeah. but yeah. I'm part of the community push back yes. to make them accountable to us, just not their board and their membership. What are we looking at here too? That was the Aboriginal daycare centre. Oh my God! I yeah, know. Can you believe it? So what happened? Did they I, just? It seems that they just abandoned it. But it looks like it's been completely gutted as well. I know. After I came in here about ten years, I was looking for the daycare centre. It actually took me ages to figure out that that was where I used to call in. Wow! Because I just didn't recognise it as where I used to call in and meet some of the parents, the guys I used to teach. And when did all this happen? Uh, to be honest, I don't know when that happened. <laughs> but it's been like that but, but for... But it's been like that for, I would say, nearly 10 years. Wow. And was it mainly Aboriginal kids? Yeah, it was all Aboriginal kids. It was kids. all Aboriginal yeah. kids, and they just destroyed the kids' daycare yeah. centre. Yeah, I don't know how or why. <laughs> um, Do you know if there was another one built? I'm not sure. There is a place down Vine Street, I think. And these houses here, they, they're really run down now, aren't they? They are. But Mick Mundine sold them off. Did he? Yeah. Well, what, for demolition? Uh, no, they weren't like that when he sold them. Oh, really? No. They'd just been let go to rack and ruin, I guess. And what about the other houses in the these street? These down here were sold off. Who were they sold to? A Greek guy whose name I don't know. And now he's renting them out for between eight to fifty I think and nine hundred a week. Nine hundred a week? Yeah. But are there any houses around here now for Aboriginal people? No. They're all gone. They're gone. All of them? Yeah, they're gone. So this was an Aboriginal neighbourhood yeah. and and now all that's left is the block. That's the it. empty block. The empty block. So um, this program Redford now, I mean it's Set in Redfern, it's supposed to be populated by Aboriginal people, but that's a total farce. It's a farce. Goodness they, gracious! They used um, that row of terraces before they were renovated, I think, as the... As a set? As the set. Jesus Christ! And it was just... And so that goes internationally as well, doesn't it? Yeah. So... So that was all... Was it supposed to be about the past or something? The Redford no, now? I, but it, I mean, I with actually, a name like now, yeah. you'd think it's about the present, wouldn't you? You'd think it's about the present. Yeah. I never actually watched it, to be honest. I, I felt right from the beginning it was going to be fake. Because there's nothing here. Well, you know, if this project here is a success and we can get people to come from all around Australia and show solidarity, this block might have houses on it, again, populated by well, Aboriginal people, is that that's, right? That's the dream. I think it'll happen. Somehow I think you're right. I think it's going to Look happen. how long the one in Canberra lasted. I know. It's been there, what, for over 30 years now? Yep, yep. And Jenny said they're going to stay here indefinitely, so... Bloody oath. Mm. Oh, that is just so sad to look at that daycare centre. We're at the block in Redfern. At the Redfern Aboriginal Tent Embassy. At the new tent embassy. And this has been here for about a week. And you're this Jenny. 
Monroe? Monroe? Yeah. yeah. Roger Elder. Um, lived here, was a founding member of the organisation. Um, had to fight the battles over the uh, non maintenance by the housing company, not repairing the premises as they. Um, Mickey went on his um, course of havoc and destruction here. Are we um, talking about Mick Monday? Uh, yeah, the housing company. Yes. Um, the two good administrators that preceded him and, and developed and restored all the houses and bought the properties were Orb Phillips and um, Richard Pacey. Mm -hmm. And he came in as the administrator after them. And that was by a process of intimidation and getting in the building the builders here and he was a labourer here. And he should have just stayed doing what he knows best, a labourer. Yeah. He's, he's got no qualifications for the position. Yeah. Um, he's actually illiterate. Yeah. So, so what's happened? Is there, is, is there money in this story? Big money, yeah. Big money. This, this mismanagement has been going on since Mickey took the position there. The, the destruction of the houses after they were built by the first two administrators. It happened under Mickey's watch. Right. And what happened to all the people who were living here? Well, they, you know, they've been <laughs> moved out over the years. There was a big push out of here on several occasions, I think. Yeah. Like the last one was the Olympics. Yeah. And this final push now, getting us all out and having the block vacant and ready for the development. So who are the developers that want this area, do you Decor. know? He's got into bed with them and money's already changed hands. He's got into bed with Sydney University. You can guarantee money's already changed hands. Oh, dear. So what are you fighting for? What do you want? Well, black housing on black land first, not last. Yeah. There's no. Com there will be no commercial development. There will be no student accommodation. It'll be black houses first or... Nothing, nothing else. Right. That was the way it was intended, right? Yeah, that was yeah. when we were on the original board. Mm. That was the intention of the company then. Mm. So do you think that funds have been I know mismanaged funds, and lost? I know lost it has been over very over from the time that he, he came on board mm. on his watch. It's, that all happened under Mickey's watch. I saw uh, you and he uh, face off. A um, bit of an argument, a YouTube video that was up. He seemed quite scared of you, actually. <laughs> he is. I'm an, I'm an intelligent black woman. We've had this, this argument many times over. Yeah. And Mickey always loses. And would he have something to hide as well? He's got a lot to hide. He's got a lot to lose. Hmm. Hmm. The, the money that they've acquired illegally, contrary to the Constitution for their family. So he needs to be held to account. Right? Yeah, this is an accounting for Mickey now. Happening. Yeah. Now what about the police? They've had they, they... they they prefer to stay neutral. Good. They won't. They're not going to come down here and put us off. It just will be how he the insidious campaign that he conducts now. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, that, we've seen his modus operandi before: destroy the toilets for the old people, the old girls not repair them, so the old women had to walk up here and go to the toilets 500 and 600 metres up the street. Is that the case now? The community centre have been very great in supporting us since we've been here. We've had access yeah. and permission to use the showers over there. Mudge and Girl made that offer, mm -hmm. the women's centre up the road here. Yeah. So we've got access to showers during the day. We had, they're only open till, they've been staying open till 9 o'clock every night since we've been here. So we can have access to the toilets. Yeah. And after that, we've got to use the station up here until 2 o'clock when they show. So yeah. the first night that the Mountable come, I saw the bliss on the girls' faces when they just had to go over the road there. Yeah. Yeah. So Jenny, would you like to see more people come here to oh, solidarity? God, God yes. My, our great God by arm, yeah, bring everybody. Yeah. So with that The more support we get, the more our moral victory and our moral high ground is maintained. Yeah. yeah. Can anybody camp here? Like yeah, even if they're not Aboriginal? All, no, well, all supporters can come and yes. camp. They will have our camp rules and our protocols, our code of conduct, and if they can't abide by that, they can't stay here. Yeah. Our speakers and our leaders have been chosen. Yep. And don't don't mess with that. Try and don't try and divide us with that. 
Oh no, that, I mean it would yeah. be really about just having more numbers yeah, here. Yeah, the so numbers, the more stronger. victory every day, seeing yeah. more people in the camp. Right? Yeah, and from what I've heard, the uh, you know the community around here have been very kind Marvelous. and brought. They've, lots we of have actually been being fed by the community since we've been established. I mean, one of my nephews walked in and said the other day, ah, "This is the most food I've ever seen at an embassy." <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty damn good down in, um, in Canberra at the tent embassy down there. We ate better than I'd eaten for months, yeah. actually. Uh, and also, when we were walking up that, you know, the towards the, the Anzac March, yeah, yeah. memorial, everybody on the sidelines was yeah, clapping. Yeah. They were all applauding. You oh, know? you were down at the Anzac? Yeah, I went there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and we got turned back. Yeah. Everybody was crying. You know, we were at the peace camp for the week leading up to that down there on the oh, right. embassy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I was there as well. I got there on um, Wednesday morning. Okay, no. I, yeah, because we still... we did those twenty four protests. Yeah, oh yeah, the record on the Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah the world record. Yeah, well, I, I spoke at a couple. I of sent days. us off with a prayer from our to our God by army. Remember? Oh right, that was you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jenny, I didn't recognise you then. <laughs> All right, so we, well, what we need to do is put a call out for as many more people. More support, more as visible as support. support. Come through every day, sign our visitors' book. Folks, this is a really great place to come to. A yeah. million dollar view. It's a million dollar view. And it's, well, if it's going to be like what it was in Canberra for a week, I thought I was in heaven. A week ago, there was an empty feeling in the paddock. And then this week when I walked over this morning, I just felt the voices of the old people back, the spirits. I felt very strongly that they were back. And it kind of, it lifted, it lifted my heart. And they were happy? They were very they're happy. Very happy. <laughs> they're very happy. They're dancing every night. They're dancing every night. <laughs> I'll come back here and dance with them. I'm always happy to do that. Well, yeah. That's about the stages and phases of the moon. <laughs> when we dance and why we dance. That's very appropriate for a woman's uh, struggle. It's very appropriate that we're squatting here again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Solidarity. <laughs>